Let's start chapter five, Newton's laws of motion. First, a quick review. Remember the force board lab? The sum of the forces was zero, and we noticed that the object was not moving. All the forces acting on the ring added up to zero when we did the math. Hey, the object wasn't moving, so that was our introduction to statics. And what did we notice if we let go of one of the spring scales? We had acceleration. We saw that with a cart. The object's at rest. It will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. I push and it accelerates. And what would happen if we pushed on that cart? It's going to accelerate. And that's what we mean when we say objects in motion stay in motion, object at rest stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. It's going to speed up. The sum of the forces is not zero. It's not static, it's dynamic. The goal of today's lab is to find a relationship between the force, the acceleration, and the mass of the object we're accelerating. This is the introduction to Newton's laws of motion. Here's the apparatus we're going to use. I've got a two meter long track, I've got a cart with masses on it, and I've got at the end, I've got a string from the cart to the pulley going down, and we're gonna hang one of those masses off the end and make the cart accelerate. Before we start, I make sure the ramp is level. I put some papers under here and get the thing nice and level and I can check it with the steel ball and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Let's get the masses down. The cart is 500 grams. This black bar is 500 grams. Each of these is 200 grams. I have 100 grams, a 50 gram, and 20 gram masses all in the cart. When we do an experiment, we want to maintain one variable constant while we change another. So we're going to use these masses one at a time. We're gonna hang one off the front and then put it back. Then we're gonna hang another one off the front and put it back. The mass of the system will remain constant. The force of gravity is going to accelerate this mass and the cart. It accelerates the whole system. Let's see how it works. Here's our first trial. We're gonna go from 110 centimeters to 180 centimeters. You're gonna time it. Ready, set, go. If you know the distance it traveled and you know the time that it took, then you can calculate the acceleration using distance equals one half AT squared. We'll put back the 20 grams take out the 50 and hang it off the front. The mass stays the same. Trial two, 50 grams. Ready, set, go. We now put the 50 gram back and hang the 100 off the front. Ready, set, go. Can you tell with greater force, we have a greater acceleration? I'm now gonna put 150 grams out front. Here we go. Ready, set, go. I'll put both of these back and take out a 200. This is gonna go real fast. Ready, set, go. Well, now you can calculate the acceleration for each one of those trials. We're gonna start another experiment now, but it's gonna be a little different. We're gonna change the mass of the cart, but keep the same mass hanging off the front. We're gonna use 50 grams, and we'll start with an empty cart. That's only 500 grams. So the mass of the system is now 550 grams. Ready, set, go. Now we're gonna keep the 50 grams out there, but we're going to make this mass bigger. I got another 500, I'm putting it in here. That's 1,000 grams plus 50, but I'm gonna put another 50 in here. So we're now doubling the mass of the system. 
The mass hanging off the end stays the same, but the mass of the system is now doubled. Ready, set, go. Now I'm gonna triple the mass of the system. But I need another 50 to do that. Ready, set, go. And now I'm gonna quadruple the mass of the system. Last one, ready, set, go. So we have two parts to this lab. Part one, we're holding the mass of the system constant. We put a mass out here. That's the weight that's going to accelerate the whole system. We measured the distance. We measured the time. You calculate the acceleration. We change FW simply by bringing this mass back, holds the mass of the system constant, Take a different mass and put it out here. As you increase the FW, you calculate the acceleration again. Make a graph of acceleration versus FW. Is there a relationship? Now for part two, we want to hold the FW constant. We're not going to change that. We're going to keep that the same. And we're going to change the mass of the system. Again, we measure D, we measure T, you calculate the acceleration. We do it again by adding a mass. We doubled the mass of the system, calculate A. Then we tripled the mass of the system, calculate A. We quadrupled the mass of the system, calculate A. Can you make a graph of acceleration versus the mass of the system, holding a force constant that accelerates the system? Is there a relationship here? You do all that math and then we'll talk about it.